The British Army has recently released details of what they are describing as a breakthrough in technology and innovation, where they demonstrated swarm capabilities through the use of multiple UAS by a single operator, bringing swarm drone technology to a practical use. Now, the event was a regulatory first as well, with the Military Aviation Authority issuing a categorization for this type of swarm for the first time to be operated by just one operator. And it's thought that this is going to be the first of many similar types of categorization and swarm drone use for the Army. This is the first time the MAA have allowed uh, the Army to operate a swarm, which is a significant achievement for the Army and military end user. So using this controller and the drones behind me, you operate up to five drones using this software, um, which gives you a, a great visibility on the area around you or in depth. Um, you can just send a drone over the hill and get their eyes on, watch over that. Less burden for the soldier on the ground. So it's definitely uh, a different experience, definitely something which I never thought I'd do before. Um, it's something that not everyone sees and not everyone probably will see. Options to be able to see different drones and experience them is something which is it's really, really cool to be fair, yeah. Two different systems were used. The first was the Atlas, where one operator controls four drones on a tablet via individual manual mission taskings. The second system was the Elbit, where one operator tasks six drones, creating autonomous missions. This means the operator can task up to six drones in a fleet at the same time, or various missions to complete different types of tasks, depending on what they're trying to achieve. The focus was on two showcase ideas. The first consisted of multiple drones providing a 24-hour perimeter defensive posture with surveillance provided by multiple UAS in and around a specific location. The second scenario worked on artificial intelligence communicating with the system to plan UAS missions so that they can provide overwatch and inform the user of any points of interest and following where necessary. The event was funded by Army Headquarters. The Nano Unmanned Aerial Systems, or NUAS, project completed a live multiple drone demonstration, also known as swarming drones. This is a real stepping stone. What we've seen again today is military operators flying these systems and not the manufacturers. So it's being put together by military operators and all flown by ourselves, which again is the first steps in order to get dismounted soldiers with using this kit and equipment. Now this is not the usual press releases of large fixed wing drones, dropping bombs, etc. that we're so used to coming out of the army over the decades. These systems are much closer cousins to the systems we use within the wider drone industry and even the hobby. This is a major step forward in the day-to-day -day use of drones to support military life, both in terms of active theatre deployment, but also in terms of assisting with the day-to-day -day logistics of military and reconnaissance. We have proved the concept that one person can fly six drones. So in the future now, we want one operator to be able to control six, 12, 30, 40 drones as part of a more integrated swarm. And as we move further with future army projects, we look to human machine teaming, which will start to bring in ground elements as well as air elements as that combined system. The significant part of this being swarm technology is that you will not require one or even more operators per drone, as has been the case in the past. This will allow skilled operators to carry out multiple functions simultaneously, even some of them autonomously, to support activities. There is also, of course, the advantage of what a single operator can achieve with a swarm of drones as there is no loss of intelligence sharing or other factors such as time, etc., time loss, which might diminish the operational value. How this might impact and benefit the use of swarm technology in the wider UK drone industry will remain to be seen. Often the transition of use case and practicality of switching from military environments to civilian can actually be very tough. But as these are the kind of drone systems we are used to deploying even in the hobby, so more recognisable types of drones at least, it might make this first wave of advancement by the military that has much faster impacts on civilian use of drones. Imagine an airport with autonomous drones inspecting aircraft and running security patrols or large warehouses deploying swarm drones from a central control centre to help with the smooth running of operations. 
How about you, our audience? What types of use case can you see this type of swarm drone technology being used for in civilian life? Let me know in the comments. It would be interesting to hear some of the ideas that you might have. This is probably more significant in terms of drone advancement than many of the fantasy projects that we see out there. We will keep an eye on the Army's new AS program or nano unmanned aerial systems, and we will bring you any further developments as they are released. If you want more content like this, focused on drones, etc., subscribe to get notified. Sean out.